Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Russell here. I want to talk today about the uh, scintillating topic of uh, checksums in Ubuntu and Linux, but this actually goes way beyond um, Ubuntu. This is uh, used throughout computing. But um, the reason that uh, I'm interested in checksums is because for backups, which is certainly a big interest, I've been doing a lot of videos about backups, checksums are super, super important. Uh, the reason for that is that what checksums are exactly, let me just jump to um, a, a definition here. A checksum is a small size block of data, i.e. it's just a little string, little alphanumeric string, but it's derived from another block of digital data. And this uses an algorithm and it's for the purpose of detecting errors that may be introduced during its transmission or storage. So two distinct use cases there. By themselves, checksums are often used to verify data integrity but are not relied upon to verify data authenticity. That stuff is actually super, super important. Let me just try to break it down a little bit. Uh, those two use cases, firstly, data storage. I've talked in all my backup videos about cold storage recently in MDiscs about the, uh, the menace of uh, bit rot and data rot, that basically if you store uh, a file cold in uh, a lot of media, the file will basically end up becoming corrupted and then unreadable because to take hard drives, for example, there'll be depolarization. Um, and so there's checksums are a great way. What, you can calculate a checksum on, the, on an original file you store. Let's call it just for the, for the sake of simplicity, file a.txt. So you calculate a checksum using one of these algorithms. And that checksum is a unique series of uh, letters and numbers that verifies that this was the, when we created this file, this was a checksum. This is when it was not corrupt, right? We know that this was a good state. Then let's say we want to create two backups of a.txt. So we can look at their checksums and that, and if, if all is good, they should be the same. If there's problems, the checksums will be different. And that's one way of detecting data, uh, data rot. Now it says here as well, uh, introduced by transmission. So this is kind of referring to stuff like, you know, when people are putting, um, uh, copies of files on the internet and sometimes uh, they get corrupted in that process this is another way so when you're downloading um, Linux distros right you'll typically see the download link and then a checksum link and I'd say most people including me up to very recently never went into the checksum link the checksum link as you can see has a alphanumeric string and then it's got the file name so I've downloaded this file um, I chose puppy Linux so it would be a quick uh, quick download now, if you're in Ubuntu, there's two uh, checksum programs that you should be, that I think are good to be aware of. One is called Quick Hash GUI. And then we also have, if I can still find it, uh, yes, we have uh, SHA256. Now, in Linux, you'll typically find a, a CLI, a command line tool, and a graphic interface. Everyone has their own philosophy after many, many years of using Linux. Um, I love the power of uh, CLIs, but if there is a GUI, a GUI for a solution, I will just go with the GUI. But this is the uh, CLI, the SLE, I don't know, SLE maybe. Uh, it's called SHA256 Sum. It's super easy. Once you've installed it, you just type the program and then the file that you want to run the checksum against, and then you'll get your checksum. Um, and the cross-platform tool is QuickHash. So QuickHash is also available for Windows and Mac. So let me show you how uh, QuickHash will do its business. I'm just gonna pop it open here. So here's QuickHash. And let's say that I want to, uh, I want to put in my file. So I'll click on File. And I'm gonna select my download from amongst all my recent uh, thumbnails and whatever I've been working on. Uh, it is the FOSS, here we go, the ISO file. So you can see it takes a few seconds to run. And then what we've got here, and I'm highlighting it, that's the checksum, right? So you can do this for any file. It doesn't need to be a Ubuntu download. It can be a Word document. It can be a, uh, it can be a video, in fact, um, etc. okay? And you can even use this to compare two files, file A and file B. Let's just stick with this, right? So we got our checksum here. And what you're supposed to do, whoops, that, I'm gonna have to clear that. Ah, okay, it's just on my clipboard. 6A, 4, 5E7A, 365B7, D3172, EB, D9, E85, CA460, E4, 
and I'm sure there's some clever way of doing this, uh, you know, uh, manually, but that looks fine to me. If I just zoom in, I'm gonna make that big, and then I look here, and you can see 6A45E7A35B, 7D3172, EBD, uh, EBD9, EAB, 5CA, 460E4, that's perfect. So those checksums are exactly aligned. And that's basically how you can use checksums in Ubuntu uh, to verify not just uh, the case of downloading, uh, you know, installation programs off the internet, but you can also use them to compare a original uh, backup with a uh, subsequent backup copy. A very, very useful thing to know how to do.